One of the things that I think you know, make markets great, of course, is how they drive innovation. That's why we have markets. They should be enablers for innovation. So what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about today is how I see us uh, using some of the experiences that I got from New York as to how do we apply them in the AUMO context and enable innovation and, and support it in, uh, in Australia. And I have to say that in doing so, we've been helped in that with the Finkel Review and a number of the things that we'll be doing under that. So <clears throat> starting off, you know, the, the issue that we had in New York, and I think you know, I've been talking about several times, is we had an existential moment. Um, un Manhattan was half underwater. And the governor looked at it and said, we, we, if we're going to build the power grid back, which we have to do, we, we have to make it more resilient. We have to make it more adaptable. We have to make it more efficient. And we have to use technology better. And so our challenge was really to start thinking about, for 21st century, is what changes needed to be made, and there I was the regulator, in the regulatory environment to, to drive that innovation. And New York, like Australia, had already adopted deregulation. So our, our utilities were, were totally unstructured. And what we did is we started driving, and I think where we kind of ended up really comes from some examples of where I saw success. So one of the first things we had to deal with was Con Edison had to build a substation in Brooklyn, New York, which is you know, sort of like building a substation in downtown Sydney. Very expensive, very complicated, very difficult. And so we challenged them and we said, you know, rather than building a substation for two, million, two billion dollars, what can you do on the demand side to actually use resources better and actually benefit customers. And so they went out and they needed about 125 megawatts of generation to, to kind of be moved off the grid in this one area. And they went out and they came back to me and they said, well, our engineers got together and uh, they came up with 30 megawatts. It's the only thing they could do. We still have to build the substation. And I said, not good enough. I don't want your engineers to go in a room and figure out what they think they need to do. I want you to do this is, is I want you to go out in the market, identify the problem, and crowdsource the solution. So they did, and they came back in two months and said, oh my gosh, with all, you know, we got some folks together and between what we can do on batteries, what we can do on solar, what we can do on blockchain, what we can do on efficiency, we just came up with 160 megawatts which is going to have to avoid building the substation. And instead of $2 billion being charged off the customers, we're only going to have to charge a half a billion. So it's a substantial savings. And so we learned from that, and we started to institutionalize that through New York. And it's sort of the things that I would say we have to think about in Australia and what AEMO's thinking about going forward. So the first lesson learned is, uh, frankly, economic advantages and environmental advantages don't have to be separate, right? Technologies change. The economic solution can be and the, the environmental solution and vice versa. The real issue is not around technology because technology is solving things. The real issue is around markets and regulation. How do we change them to enable these things to come to the table? What do we need to do to improve it? So we, num we identified a number of changes which I think are pretty much universal and, and are applicable here. So one is putting the customers at the center. I mean, it seems pretty obvious, right? But you think about it, we designed the electric grid in the 20th century, not with the customers in mind, but with engineers solving the issues because we had regulated monopolies or government-owned entities, and we, we thought it was too complex. What we did, started thinking about is, frankly, from the customer's perspective, customers pay a total bill. And so what we really ought to be thinking about is how to make regulation and markets design to drive total efficiency from the productivity of the system, the entire system, from the customer's perspective. Because as a customer, you know, you don't really care what your network costs are, or your retail um, costs are, or your wholesale supply costs are. What you really care about is what's your total bill. And it's that we had to start thinking about how do we optimize around that. The second piece was really the age-old problem in this industry, which is information asymmetry. And so when, you know, when you think about it, utilities, retailers, they know a lot more information about the system than third parties, new people coming in. 
So how do we get rid of that? And so one of the solutions we came with is, is that whenever a utility had to do a capital product, we, they would develop these plans and we called them integrated distribution, distributed system integration plan where the whole of the system was laid out. All the needs were there. All the inf information became transparent because markets are around driving transparency and consequently the innovators could then come in and say, oh, you've got that problem? I've got this solution. So rather than the, the utilities or the regulators holding the information, the information becomes public. So one of the things, of course, we're, see, we're seeing out of the Finkel review is a recognition we need to do more whole of system planning. AEMO could work with the networks and others to actually put the information out there of what the system needs, some of the system opportunities, so the innovators then can start designing solutions that are actually going to be best for consumers. So creating that information availability. But that's not just long term, it has to be real time. So when you think about it, you know, when we talk about energy markets, really traditional suppliers provided a lot of different products, not just energy. They provided system security services, what we call system strength, and regulation services, voltage support, all those type of things. They also provided capability. Well, if you have a pricing regime, you're only sending one price signal, you're not actually providing that kind of information so that different resources could know what would be the resource needs and then we can optimize them because it is a machine. Thankfully, it's a system of systems. And so getting accurate information is important and that's information not just on the bulk power system but actually down to the meter. So actually seeing what the real value is of being able to shift demand becomes valuable because at this point, and remember, AEMO's job as a network operator is simply to keep the system in balance. We're indifferent on whether that, imba that balancing occurs because we're able to withdraw load from the system or add supply. What we care about is optimizing it real time using and, and making sure it's secure real time. So having pricing that gives that accuracy and allows people to invest is also part of destroying this information asymmetry and really creating real markets. The, th the other piece that we, we thought was really important was encouraging collaboration. So what's really different now, and I think it's really different in the 21st century economy, and you know this as innovators, if you think that you are the only one who has the solutions, you probably know you're wrong. And so when you th I think about the utility industry, and I grew up in, this in a regulated monopolistic utility industry, you know, we felt it was the command and control approach, everything was closed system, Nobody, there's the idea of open formats was like just totally foreign. And the result is we got really good ideas, but we probably didn't get the best ideas. So one of the things I think is very important is that we collaborate, we learn, we don't assume we have all the answers. And one of the things we're doing at, at, at EMOS, of course, we're collaborating with ARENA, and we're looking to work with third parties, things like blockchain, things like virtual power generation, so we actually can understand how this system can be worked and we can develop the systems about getting there. The other thing is about is taking risks. So, you know, one of the things that um, as a former regulator, I, you know, we used to, was, utilities always knew, is that if they did what we told them to do, there was a 99% chance that they would recover their, um, their investments, right? So they weren't risk takers. And you know, when you think about companies that, that take risks and the amount of money they put into R&D, traditionally utilities didn't. So one of the things we thought was very important is that we encourage proof of concepts. Because the problem is, is if you try to design in a market academically and you sit in a room and you say, oh, I think this is the way we have to design this product, but you've never really used a battery. You've never actually worked with virtual power generation. You've actually never really seen demand response work. You could spend two years and then come out with something and it's suboptimal. So the other aspect that we're, we're doing differently at AEMO is we're starting to do these proof of concepts. Working with ARENA, working with third parties, learning how we use these technologies. So we're excited about, for example, the work we're doing in South uh, Australia with batteries, with the work we're doing in Victoria, because we're going to learn from all of these experiences and out of those learnings, we'll get richer, we'll get better, and we'll be able to design these services. So I think another aspect of this in getting us to scale is a recognition that we, we have to be willing to take risk. 
We have to do work small, because you think about entrepreneurs, they learn from something and they pivot. So to do that, we, we've set up an innovation center. Joe Witters, who's here, is, is leading that, so that we have a, an entity, a group, because we do a lot of work, obviously, it's business as usual to keep the lights on, that is very much focused on the future, trying things, driving it, trying to be more transactional so we can move things forward. So I, I think we're at, a, obviously, an incredible time in this industry. The, the speed of change is happening faster than, you know, I've been in this since 88, and, you know, where um, an increased efficiency on a, on a gas generator was the exciting thing. When I think about all the things that have changed and are changing, but the, the issue, challenge to us now for Australia for leading is not around technology, because you all are in this room. The challenge is getting the markets right and getting regulation right. I think the work that, that uh, Alan has done, and, and that we're sort of in that right, right space, now really it is, is delivering and, and getting it done. So thank you, and uh, I look forward to your questions. <laughs>